going to present on the worker co-op index, and uh, I'm, I've abbreviated a much longer presentation, so uh, normally I start by actually giving a fair bit of theoretical background about where the index uh, came from, and it's really around the notion of total participation in terms of employment, ownership, and management, and so uh, basically the, the thrust that the index came from was identifying worker co-ops as probably the sort of ideal organization in which participation, ownership, and responsibility actually get played out because the business is owned and operated by the employees within, within the enterprise. And so that's kind of the, the, the genesis of really looking at total participation management. So the, the, the purpose, and I have to look at this screen because this screen's too small for me. Um, the, the purpose is basically to help measure the degree of adherence to the co-op principles and values. So it's really what we're trying to do is saying within a worker co-op, in particular, since it's a day-to-day -day activity, we really make sure that all our activities in the, in the worker co-op, from the way we treat one another in terms of management, governance, employees with one another, customers, suppliers, all of that needs to embody the co-op values and principles, and that needs to be at the heart of all of our kind of operational governance kind of vision of what a worker co-op is. Um, how to, to maintain our identity as cooperatives in terms of our strategy as firms. So again, recognizing that as a worker co-op, yes, we're providing goods and services in the community, but we really need to, to see how this identity that, and purpose that we have from a practical kind of market perspective also relates very directly to our cooperative identity and how we maintain those values within that identity in terms of our vision of what we're doing. Um, it's the tool is also designed to help us measure our success in terms of actually achieving that identity. So uh, some sense of, of are we really progressing in terms of living out, as we say, walk the talk? Are we really doing that? And then lastly, it actually provides some guidance through the assessment process of ways that we can improve both on the governance and the operations side of our, of our cooperatives. The report is based on a questionnaire that goes out to all members and employees. So in worker co-ops often you have a mix between uh, member employees and non-member employees. So there's often a transition period where employees come in before they become members. So the questionnaire is actually designed for all, all participants in the, in the, in the cooperative. There's about 173 questions, and, and basically the, one of the fundamental premises of, the, of this approach is that the perceptions of the employees and the members is the foundation of the way they interact with the co-op. So if I perceive the co-op to be trustworthy, then I'm going to act in a different way. If I perceive my colleagues to be uh, trusting and, and reliable, I'm going to act in a different way. If I perceive that we're innovative, I'm going to react in a different way. So the questions really are about the members and the employees' perception of multiple facets within the, within the organization. And, and out of those, we then have basically created a number of indexes that were basically subgroups of the questions. And so we have a maturity index, which basically, out of the 173 questions, we identified what were the key questions we thought every worker co-op, regardless of what sort of organizational structure they had, what sort of business um, enterprise they're engaged in, should actually have high scores in these particular areas. So we made that into a maturity index, which basically gives you a, a, a kind of a quick snapshot of, of where your cooperative is as, as towards an ideal uh, worker cooperative. The organizational trust index, again, looks at what level of trust there, there is within the cooperative in terms of the openness to revealing things about yourself in terms of your perception and your, your discussion, which will affect, again, the way you're interacting with, with folks. And then we have both the index for the co-op values and for the co-op principles. Again, series of questions that relates very specifically to those, to the values and the, the principles. So these little index are just a snapshot that, you know, again in the report, the report's about 170 pages long, so elements of the report we try to kind of summarize and give kind of a quick snapshot so you don't have to, uh, you can get some kind of indicator of, of where you are. So you can see in terms of the data that was used to produce this, the co-op is actually an immature co-op. That does not mean in time, it means actually in structure and operation. So this co-op might have been around for 15 years, but because of the response to the answers, it's a strong indication that 
there's real weaknesses in terms of the way this co-op is operating as it relates to the co-op values and the co-op co principles. So again, just uh, indexes, uh, just uh, quick samples there. So the next, the next part of the report basically is a, it provides a general picture. And besides the co-op values and the, and the co-op principles and the overall index, there is basically 30 different organization dimensions that the report produces information on. And they're divided into four basic categories. So organizational systems, and that would include things like you know, the systems of communication, the transparency within, the, within management and governance, uh, feedback systems, how, how people actually learn and get response to what they're engaging in, uh, development of the members, uh, pay scales, in innovation, personnel policy. So a whole series of relates kind of the or organizational uh, structure. The next one is the organizational climate, which really relates to how the people within their co-op are relating to one another. So the levels of, of trust, respect, the competence of, of leadership, what kind of management style, how much participation is, is occurring within that, the relations between the workers, and of course, do people actually enjoy going to work? Are they having some fun in terms of the activity of what they're, what they're carrying out? Uh, then there's the personal attitudes and actions, which really looks at your individual participation. So, you know, your personal ownership, a sense of knowledge of what's going on, your, this, your responsibility for your activities, your capacity to involve and, and make process improvements, so that real uh, capacity to, to make a difference within that context. And then a whole series of outcomes, uh, both individual, organizational, and social. So we're looking at the co-op, the co-ops are there to meet the, the needs of their members, so individual outcomes are very important, but also are the organizational outcomes. A, a, a good cooperative, good worker co-op can only meet its members' needs if it's, if it's organizationally sound and it's operating well. And then, of course, needing to also uh, meet the needs of the community if we're going to have a sustainable society and, and actually benefit uh, all, all participants, not just the, the owners of the cooperative. So these answers in terms of the questionnaire is that they're, they're uh, based on the positive responses and we actually do two levels. We do a broad positive response criteria and a narrow one just because it, it helps with the analysis. So I'm just going to give you a very quick example. Uh, we do a detailed analysis for each one of the, the principles, each one of the values, and each one of those organizational dimensions. We have a, a graph that's produced through the, through, the, through the report, which again identifies all of the questions that were asked, the positive answers, the negative answers, and null answers, which would be either I don't want to answer, or I don't understand the question, or I think the question's irrelevant. So again, when you're doing the analysis of the, re of the report, you basically look at each one of these organizational dimensions, the kind of answers you, you get, and then you start thinking through what's the implications of what the answers are for this particular dimension. And, and then flowing from that, uh, you'll develop some recommendations or, and this is done, just to emphasize, this is not done, this is not done sort of totally independently. You're working with a, a, a committee of the, of the cooperative, of all of the various stakeholders in the cooperative, and this process in terms of annual analysis and recommendations is carried out in a dialogue with, the, with the, the cooperative. Another key part of it, just in terms of that analysis, is that the, we also do demographics. So you know, we can identify in a large cooperative different uh, divisions, different uh, types of jobs in the cooperative, management, line cooperatives, and again you can see whether there's dramatically different perceptions, for instance, in communication between what management thinks is going on and what members on the production line think is going on. So again, it really is useful because often within our enterprises, we think our perception is the right perception. By looking at the demographics, we understand there's a whole bunch of people that see this world very differently than what I see it. So that really means we've got some issues here we have to think about and, and try and transform the cooperative. So that's a very uh, useful aspect of the, of the tool. And then basically recommendations come out of the tool and, and just emphasize that you, know, you can have recommendations in all of these dimensions or values. Um, and, and basically what we try and do with the tool is not be prescriptive but identify these are areas that the cooperative needs to think about. By definition, worker co-ops are owned and managed by their employees. It's not for a consultant on the other side to say what should be done. It's essentially a dialogue with, with those folks to, to do it. So going forward, some of the challenges we have at this stage is, is increasing the use of the tool, uh, training some consultants. It is a complex tool to use and analyze. 
um, administer the tool, and we're also adapting the questionnaire for really collective or horizontally managed worker co-ops at, at Weinstein, we kind of horizontal and, and vertical co-ops. And then some of the solutions we're doing is we're networking with the federations of worker co-ops uh, and co-op developers, and we've actually incorporated a, a, a cooperative that is managing and licensing the use of the, of the uh, tool. And uh, we'll continue to uh, work in terms of adapting and improving the tool. Thank you. sustainability scorecard is about and you know it's just fantastic that so many people and so many co-ops are actually looking at this area because what we measure is important in our society so I think we need to just keep in mind that um, yes from an accounting point of view traditional business firms and cooperatives because they've also adopted generally accepted accounting principles that we do measure certain things on a balance sheet and on an income statement but it's really an incomplete picture and it's important to measure those things because financial viability is obviously a cornerstone of sustainability however there's a lot more to it than that and we need to measure the things that are important to us as cooperatives and then let people know why that's important and then communicate that to our members to our broader communities educate board members and i think the idea of aggregating that data that leslie was talking about is actually extremely important because right now i can tell you in ontario particularly but certainly across canada we have a very um, challenging political and regulatory environment for cooperative development and sustainability. We're really being forced down the path. I mean, I was listening to presentations yesterday about degeneration of cooperatives. We're being forced down that path because the benefits of cooperatives are not being measured or recognized. That's the fundamental issue. So let's take the bull by the horns ourselves and measure what's important to us and then be proud about that and communicate that to people. I think that's a fundamental thing that we need to be looking at. Bonjour, donc euh, je vais essayer de passer au mode français. Donc je vous invite à mettre vos écouteurs pour ceux qui en ont besoin. Euh, mon nom est Marie Paul Robichaud. Euh, je vais présenter aujourd'hui plus du point de vue du Conseil québécois de la coopération que de celui euh, de la mutualité plutôt que de celui de la règle développement territorial et coopération. Et je vais euh, tenter de vous amener un peu ailleurs dans la question de la mesure. Euh, donc, euh, on va ajouter des, des raisons de mesurer à la liste que vous nous avez présentée, Sophia. <rire> donc, euh, donc, un autre objet de mesure, je vais tout de suite vous donner les, les faits saillants de la présentation, comme ça vous allez pouvoir savoir où je m'en vais. Donc, euh, ce qu'on cherche à mesurer, c'est ce qu'on souhaite faire mesurer, c'est la contribution des coopératives aux enjeux de société. Donc, comment les coopératives sont des citoyennes euh, dans leur communauté et euh, comment elles agissent sur les, les éléments euh, où la société a des changements à apporter. Et euh, pourquoi on souhaite faire ça? Ben, c'est connaître l'impact et l'engagement des coopératives dans les enjeux de société puis les motiver à l'action, donc les motiver à intervenir dans ce... Euh, dans cette société, pas seulement comme une entreprise, mais comme une entreprise citoyenne. Donc, euh, je situe euh, cette euh, question-là de euh, notre place dans la société et notre contribution à la société à partir de la référence qui est euh, notre plan d'ensemble du mouvement coopératif et mutualiste au Québec. Donc, euh, depuis 2007, les coopératives et mutuelles du Québec 
euh, conduisent ensemble une réflexion stratégique afin d'identifier des enjeux euh, à la fois euh, provenant de la société et à la fois internes au mouvement coopératif, donc on choisit, euh, auquel on choisit de s'attaquer ensemble et de trouver des stratégies, puis on se donne des objectifs communs. Donc, d'où euh, l'intérêt de éventuellement pouvoir mesurer euh, notre rapport à ces enjeux-là. Donc, euh, on a euh, trois enjeux de société qui sont identifiés dans notre dernier plan d'ensemble actuellement. Donc, on travaille ensemble à agir sur les changements démographiques. On travaille ensemble à agir en développement durable et en occupation du territoire. En parallèle, on a une autre démarche qui nous amène à soulever d'autres enjeux. Toutefois, ils ne sont pas nécessairement suivis de la même façon, mais je vais quand même vous les souligner. En ce sens, euh, en 2010, euh, la rue de développement territorial et coopération avec des partenaires organisait la conférence internationale « Quel projet de société pour demain? » Donc, on reste dans la réflexion de la contribution des coopératives dans un ensemble de partenaires à un projet de société. Et à ce moment-là, on identifiait encore cinq enjeux euh, de société et trois enjeux internes. Donc, on situe la place des coopératives dans la société, dans notre réflexion. Quoi mesurer ben, l'impact des activités mises en œuvre par les coopératives face à ces enjeux? Oui, sur la coopérative, oui, sur la communauté. Donc, je reste assez vague parce qu'on euh, est encore en train de chercher comment mesurer, Fiari. Donc, euh, pourquoi mesurer, démontrer la contribution? mobiliser le mouvement dans le sens qu'il faut entreprendre davantage d'actions et euh, prendre modèle sur les actions qui ont déjà été mises en œuvre. Donc le défi, quoi mesurer, comment mesurer. Euh, présentement, on s'attarde davantage à documenter les initiatives et leurs retombées. Euh, C'est euh, complexe de dire, OK, comment les coopératives contribuent au changement démographique au Québec. Donc, euh, l'enjeu comme tel n'est pas nécessairement euh, complètement documenté et comment on s'y inscrit non plus. Une question pour Jessica, peut-être que tu vas l'aborder dans, dans la prochaine. Euh... Peut-être que tu vas l'aborder dans la prochaine session. Il semble que toutes les présentations euh, sont ont été présentés dans le but de, de présenter les résultats dans d'autres sessions ultérieures. Euh, tu, tu as parlé de, de mesurer la participation des, des membres des, des caisses populaires en, en Saskatchewan euh, à, à l'intérieur des, des outils que vous avez développés. Euh, plusieurs des coopératives que tu as mentionnées dont Affinité sont, sont le résultat de, de fusion de, de plusieurs caisses populaires en Saskatchewan. Est-ce que Parmi les outils que vous avez développés, vous avez pu euh, avoir quelque chose justement qui euh, a indiqué comment on a favorisé ou pas favorisé la participation. Nous um, we will talk about a little bit more uh, this afternoon, but I could just let you know one of the reasons why we're so excited to have Affinity with us is because they have a relatively unique uh, district. Is that what it is? Linda will talk more about it at our session. Uh, she's our affinity rep. But they have um, a district governance or a district participation governance structure, and the districts correspond often with the um, the former smaller credit unions that merged with affinity. So we will be able to some of our questions on the longer questionnaire talk about whether they are able to participate in that district structure and whether that enhances their ability to participate more in the credit union. Um, and so we do have um, a, a piece to get into that. And that's also where some of our interviews will get into how you actually participate. But one of the things we want to highlight for Affinity is their, that unique structure that they have so that the, even though they're now a large merged credit union, they're able to keep a lot of that small democratic participation because they've divided um, their branches and their communities up into these districts where they have their own representation at that level. So I think probably, I don't know, Linda, do you want to answer more now or you want to just wait till our session? That was okay? <laughs> yeah. Marie Bouchard, um, these presentations are all very interesting and I, I guess we will uh, all run to the other sessions to hear the conclusions and the content of what you're working on. 
Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to, to visit them because I have another meeting, so uh, I, I will just have a general question. Uh, I think it's very creative to speak of cooperative social responsibility. I think it's quite interesting, even for uh, organizations that are not worker co-ops, uh, to have indicators of uh, total participation management. Uh, I think that the CQCM uh, indicators are quite uh, creative and, and very relevant to the cooperative specificity, the cooperative difference. Um, because the movement of corporate social responsibility is so strong, um, because we speak about it a lot more than we speak about cooperatives, and because cooperatives are responsible as citizens in a different way than corporations, and so, uh, in a way, better, <laughs> uh, that their indicators may turn out to be better than CSR indicators. Is there an intention or a, a movement in the direction of influencing CSR indicators in order to incorporate cooperative indicators and therefore comparison on a uh, level cooperatives would win? Well, I'll just make one quick comment, which is the emerging cooperatives, the smaller cooperatives, are absolutely not interested in corporate social responsibility, not even a little bit. And I think the larger co-ops need to listen to them. Quand on regarde le référentiel du BNQ 21 qui est mis de l'avant euh, par le gouvernement du Québec, euh, on constate que euh, dans certains points, notamment toute la question de la gouvernance, les coopératives ont tendance à, à se carrer assez rapidement. Donc, euh, la question est intéressante à savoir si on amène des indicateurs des coopératives dans la responsabilité sociale ou euh, est-ce qu'on se distingue dans les outils de la responsabilité sociale Euh, je pense que le débat n'est pas tranché. Je pense qu'il doit y avoir un dialogue entre les deux. Mais euh, c'est une question euh, qui mérite peut-être de réfléchir davantage, certainement. Merci. Oui, bonjour. Guillaume Lebrien. Je suis des coopératives d'habitation. Euh, et comme je vais être euh, dans un des ateliers tout à l'heure, j'aurais aimé savoir s'il était possible que vous me donniez en deux ou trois phrases que vous retenez comme différence coopérative à travers vos recherches, à travers les indicateurs dont je n'ai malheureusement pas la chance d'entendre toute les, la finesse, mais qu'est-ce que vous retenez pour dire euh, que, que je puisse, euh, de façon toute simple, pouvoir ramener euh, aux gens des coopératives dans ma région, dans, dans les différents secteurs, et leur dire, ben, regardez, à travers les recherches et les indicateurs, voici là, euh, ce, qui est, ce qui est fortement identifié comme différence pour eux. J'en appelle un peu à... Thank you for the question, and uh, you know all this information and the details is going to be available as well. So after the workshop, so that's important. Um, I think that I'm going to speak more because I developed this scorecard so that all cooperatives could use it small, medium, large, and um, I'm working mostly as a co-op developer, so I usually deal with startup cooperatives and in the emerging sectors, so local organic food, renewable energy, cooperatives that have already a social justice and uh, ecological um, motivation in terms of what they want to do with their business and their timely ecology together with uh, you know social justice as well as the economy and how to make a living in, in a new world and a new economy. So I think that for the emerging cooperatives, actually the financial or economic indicators are extremely important because they tend to get so involved in their day-to-day -day that they forget about even doing the basic bookkeeping. So I think you know, for the smaller cooperatives, the emerging cooperatives, the economic indicators and the processes around that are extremely important and what's important for them to measure in their organizations. So for the larger co-ops, they're all doing that already, right? Um, 
In terms of differences and the cooperative difference, I think that the governance and the democratic governance and how that works, the processes that are used, it's not just about the benchmarks, but it's the process that we go through as cooperatives to make the decisions, to determine the benchmarks, to decide what those priorities are for each of our autonomous cooperatives and how that fits into the larger movement and indeed the community or society as a whole. And, you know, building democratic capacity in our society is going to be, from my point of view, the single most important thing technologically that we can do because that is a social technology. It's not about nanotechnology, it's not about renewable energy technology, it's about social technology. How do we organize ourselves as human beings to work together to accomplish these very daunting goals that we have? So I think that is a fundamental difference. And whenever I talk to people and they ask me, well, why would we set up a co-op instead of you know, just a regular company in our startup business? And I always say to them, well, it comes down to one thing. If you want a democratic organization where the democratic principles are actually enshrined in legislation and cooperative principles around the world, if you want to be part of that bigger movement, that's why you would do it as a cooperative. So that is a very significant cooperative difference. I think the other cooperative difference that we don't talk about very much, but I have to give credit to emerging cooperatives, because they have been very much the leaders in ecological restoration. And the larger co-ops, many of them, are very latecomers to that game. And I think what I would like to see personally in terms of dialogue, I would love to see the larger cooperatives help to finance some kind of ongoing annual face-to-face -face dialogue with emerging cooperatives so that they can learn and support from each other because the emerging co-ops need some of the financial and human resources and those kind of good business practices. They need those things. And the larger cooperatives need the innovation and entrepreneurship and um, you know, ecological targets and, and innovative ideas and products that the emerging co-ops bring. So I think that could be something. The cooperation amongst cooperatives that could be very, very different from the corporate sector and corporate social responsibility because the reality is those corporations very much see themselves as competitors and they're busy trying to beat each other and eat each other. And I think the cooperatives, from my experience for 30 years, it is incredible to me how, when I travel around the world, how open cooperatives are in sharing their information. And that information is incredibly powerful because, you know, knowledge is power. Principles are a, a major guide to, the, to the, the kinds of things that cooperatives need to know about themselves and work out for themselves and communicate. Um, I guess I'm going back a little bit to the other question. Um, one of the things that, that has happened recently is that uh, the two major grocery chains in, in Atlanta, Canada, other than the cooperatives, are Sobeys and Loblaws. Um, and Walmart is, is come, has come in in quite a big way, and you may be aware that they are expanding the grocery, uh, their grocery division. Target is coming to us in the fall, and I guess they're already somewhere in Canada, but they're coming, uh, they're targeting fall. And all these uh, organizations are doing um, what they call social reporting, sustainability reporting. They use different words, right? Um, the, the terminology is, what I find disturbing is we should have been the first, <laughs> you know? We should have established the grounds on which um, the, this language developed. So now, we're, now we are in a, a position of having to say, all right, so what are we going to call what we're doing? And what is different? Because the, the literature is showing us that, quite rightly, um, the public is aware that corporate responsibility statements, sustainability reports by Shell, uh, what Walmart is telling them, and so on, um, are in large part image management. 